I'm David Tucker and this is Cloud Tracker. We have a ton of cloud announcements to get to this month. I'm coming to you straight from the Pluralsight headquarters. Let's dive in. Let's jump right into our featured announcements for this month. In a previous episode, we talked about using predictive auto scaling for your infrastructure on GCP. This feature for Compute Engine is out of preview and is now generally available. This feature enables the service to look at your CPU history for your managed instance groups and use machine learning to determine the number of VMs that are needed. In many cases, this can highlight a need for scaling before you even realize it's needed. Now, this feature isn't targeted at all workloads. Google does provide guidance directly in the console in the configuration for your managed instance group on whether or not it would work for your workload. This feature is available in all Google Cloud regions. Next, Google has released Cloud DNS for GKE in preview. With this feature, you can leverage Cloud DNS directly for GKE without having to use a cluster hosted DNS provider. In addition, this feature supports the full Kubernetes DNS specification. This removes the burden of having to manage your own DNS server while still allowing local resolution of DNS queries on each GKE node. To take advantage of this preview, you will need to be using GKE version 1.18 or later for new clusters and GKE version 1.19 for later for existing clusters. Now, in addition, you need to be leveraging Cloud SDK version 341 or later. Check the link in the episode notes to see how you can get started integrating Cloud DNS with your GKE solutions. Google Cloud's Artifact Registry is a next generation container registry. But last month, Google announced that in addition to containers, they are offering support for other types of artifacts in preview. This includes Java packages for Maven, Node.js packages for NPM, and Python packages for PyPI. If you're creating reusable artifacts for your organization using any of these, you can integrate this private artifact store into your build process. You can even make sure that you're storing your artifacts in the regions where you're deploying so that you can reduce latency. Now, as I mentioned, this feature is in preview, but you can check out the link in the episode notes to see how you can get started working with it. If you're training large and complex models on Google Cloud, you'll be excited to hear that Google has just announced new cloud TPU VMs, which provide direct access to TPU host machines instead of accessing the TPUs over the network. You can use this to do all of your model creation on a single VM that can access the TPU directly and later expand out for large-scale training. Aiden Gomez, the CEO of Cohere, states that direct access to TPU VMs has completely changed what we're capable of building on TPUs and has dramatically improved the developer experience and model performance. For this initial preview, these VMs are available in the US Central 1 and Europe West 4 regions. Next, we have our platform updates for GCP, and we have a lot to get to. First off, we have two important updates for the storage transfer service that affect organizations that are adopting a multi-cloud strategy. The first of these is that the storage transfer service has added the ability to integrate with AWS Security Token Service, or STS. This means you will no longer have to pass credentials to transfer data from an Amazon S3 bucket, but instead, you'll be able to use a federated identity. The next announcement is similar, but focused at Microsoft Azure. This new feature for Azure allows you to copy data from Azure Data Lake Store Gen 2. Now, it is important to note that both of these features are available as a preview, so I wouldn't connect them to your production workloads just yet. Now, next, we have a handful of announcements for Cloud SQL. First, Active Directory integration that was added earlier this year in preview has now graduated to being generally available. This includes support for Windows authentication via managed Microsoft Active Directory. Now, in addition to this announcement, the latest release of SQL Server 2019 is now supported by Cloud SQL. This includes many new capabilities, including accelerated database recovery, an improved query engine, and resumable index build, just to name a few. Grab all the details in the link from the episode notes. We also have an improvement with Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL. Google has added logical replication and decoding for Postgres, which can enable you to utilize change data capture workflows for your databases. Now, if you want to leverage this preview feature, you will need to consult the documentation link included in the episode notes as setting this up is different in Cloud SQL than with a traditional Postgres database. 
And we aren't done with Cloud SQL just yet, as Google has announced reductions in maintenance times for MySQL and Postgres on Cloud SQL, both of which should now have a maintenance time frame of under 60 seconds, as well as SQL Server, whose maintenance time frame should now be under 120 seconds. Check the documentation page from the episode notes for more details. Now, BigQuery has made row-level security generally available. This powerful feature enables you to specify subsets of data from a table that a user can access. This is commonly leveraged in multi-tenant architectures to control which tenant a user has access to. This adds to the project, data set, table, and column level security that are already available for BigQuery. You can click on the link in the episode notes to the announcement from Google, which also includes links to the documentation and best practices for this feature. Now, we've already talked about one new addition to VMs for GCP, but we also have another new VM family to discuss. Last month, Google released their new Tau VMs, which are based on third-gen AMD Epic processors. These processors have full x86 compatibility, so your existing applications can run on them without modification. According to Google, Tau VMs offer 56% higher absolute performance and 42 higher price performance compared to general purpose VMs from any of the leading public cloud vendors. Now, if you're interested in checking out the stats that Google uses to back up this claim, check out the link in the episode notes. Next, Ubuntu Pro is now available on GCP. These images are now generally available thanks to a partnership between Google and Canonical. This version offers increased lifetime security updates, additional compliance certifications, and cloud-based pricing. To leverage this OS image, just select it when creating a new VM in the console. Now, the announcement includes additional information on the benefits, as well as a link to the announcement from Canonical and links to the relevant documentation. Finally, Google has announced that the Google Cloud VMware engine is now HIPAA compliant. This means that you can now leverage this engine for healthcare workflows that are handling protected health data. I've included a link to this announcement in the episode notes. Additionally, if you are new to running HIPAA compliant workflows on GCP, I have also included a link to Google's guidance for running these workflows in the cloud. For this month's featured learning resources, I have three completely different types of resources. First up, there is a new video course in the Pluralsight content library that covers an essential skill when working in GCP, scaling. This video course will walk you through foundational concepts like cloud VPN peering and managed instance groups. It will then review how you can leverage HTTP load balancing and auto scaling to create elastic infrastructure that can grow and contract based on user demand. After you review this, you will learn how to automate this infrastructure using Deployment Manager and Terraform. If you haven't yet mastered scaling your cloud-based infrastructure in GCP, this is exactly the course for you. Now, finally, you may have heard over the last month that Pluralsight and A Cloud Guru have joined forces to give you and your teams the expertise and hands-on experiences to thrive in a cloud-driven world. Later this month, we will be hosting a panel of experts from both companies to discuss the past, present, and most importantly, the future of the cloud. A Cloud Guru's SVP of Cloud Transformation, Drew Ferment, will moderate the discussion with cloud experts Forrest Brazil, Keisha Williams of A Cloud Guru, and Janana Ravi, Dan Whalen, and Ned Belavance of Pluralsight. Site. You will learn all about cloud culture and what it means for you. You'll learn what skills are required to be successful and how you can acquire them. You can find the link to sign up for this online event in the episode notes. Thank you for joining us for this month's Cloud Tracker for Google Cloud Platform. You can find links to everything I've discussed in the episode notes. I'll see you next month to discuss what's new in the cloud here on Cloud Tracker.